Yes. Oh, the kangaroo erotica is so good. The law so love jank. it. Love it. I love it. Oh man, this is great. Thank you guys for being here. I'm excited to have you with us. You have no one. choice. From fabulous Las oh, Vegas, Nevada, is. this is Pop Therapy. <laughs> real people, real questions, and real therapists. Have a question for the show? Go over to podtherapy.net. Send us a question. We'll answer it here on the show. He's not reading the script. <laughs> no, <it's> not. <laughs> but hey, I got it right. And now, broadcasting from the churn, that's Dr. Jacob. Hi. That's Wayne. That's Hello. Brogan. Woo. That's Kaz. I'm Jim. Hello. It's time for some pod therapy. It's Jimmy and the Life Coach, y'all. Jimmy and the Life Coach. And I want to. Uh, uh, hey, Buddy Nice Podcast. And those people. Yeah, and, we're good. and the extra. Hey, Buddy Nice Podcast is here in the studio because my genetically inferior co hosts <laughs> have come down with diseases to which Jacob and I are immune because we mm-hmm. lick doorknobs. <laughs> yep. Because we party at the right clubs. Our herpes flare ups happened <laughs> the last week. <laughs> <laughs> Dummies. You know, Jim, just because I'm sick doesn't mean it's genetically <laughs> inferior. That's oh, exactly Whitney. what that means. <laughs> pew, 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 Texas. Pew, Texas. Oh, I am legally obligated to let you know that this episode is brought to you by our Thera partners, Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. Pickett! There it is. Well, welcome, uh, Hey Buddy Nice podcast. So for regular show listeners who have never actually heard us say the name of your show... Only you as individuals. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, can you please explain to uh, everybody listening what the hell is Hey Buddy Nice Podcast? Also, my favorite fucking coffee mug. I still <laughs> use it all the Good. time. And it's really funny because my daughter has no idea that this is a podcast. <laughs> she just calls it Daddy's Hey Buddy Cowboy Hat Mug. Aww. And it's great. I love that. Like, Daddy, you want your cowboy hat mug? I'm like, yes. Yes, yes, yes I, I, I do. do. <laughs> so what is your uh, podcast about, friends? Uh, yeah, you, you're not <laughs> wrong. Oh, you're That's playing the music. Right. That's great. Uh, That's great. Well, as you know, uh, Brogan is from Scotland. I am from Australia. We live on other sides of the world, and we yes. just talk about whatever the fuck we want. Basically. Okay, you talk about all the people in the middle. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not even a joke. The amount yeah. of times that we talk about pizza Vegas and people in Vegas. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. For okay. the last eight months, though, uh, for Brogan, it has been very much all about uh, '90s hit hit, hit, oh hit sitcom The Nanny. We're going oh, there. The one yeah. that she's wearing there. a shirt with right now. Yes. Oh Brogan, God. tell us about your old man fetish. <laughs> Jacob actually found out about this last week and thought I was joking. I found out in the parking lot. <laughs> I I like old men. I don't know what else to say. You have nothing to apologize for. I have for. nothing to apologize for. Your to... father's dick has been in me. There it is. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the show, everybody. You know hey, what? buddy, nice podcast. <laughs> Listen to this show. Oh, Mother, bro. I am so sorry. Hi, oh, Brogan's mother, Brogan. Brogan's not oh. sorry. Brogan is not sorry. Oh. Sorry. Not sorry. Mother Brogan, you do not want to join the Patreon. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash therapy. It gets erotic. <laughs> But if you want a chance to win some uh, some Funko Pops, hell yeah, you of myself, do. Jim, Nick, and Whitney, uh, yes. get over on the Patreon and sign up on the Theradactyl level or higher. That's correct. For every ten dollars you pledge on the Patreon, you will get one entry into the raffle to get the Love Funko it. Pop collection of get all them. four of us signed, whether you want them to be or not, by all the hosts. And if you join in May, uh, we don't care when your billing cycle is. If we just see your name and that they're yeah, then you're level, in. you're in. Yeah. So some people are like, oh, no, but my billing cycle isn't. We don't care. Good. Just... You shouldn't be having so much interest in my cycle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the sharks. Wait thing. until they sync up. Ooh, I'm being handed a card. The official Hey Buddy Nice Podcast, the number one Las Vegas podcast based out of Scotland and Australia. <laughs> I love this. Fair enough. <laughs> Business cards. That's a good idea. Right. Does ICS have business cards? We have the chips. chips. Oh, the chips. Yeah, the chips are our business cards. Okay. We don't make enough money yet to make something yeah. like that. No, those are... <laughs> well, I could just start giving you the ones he throws at mm. me. I mean, <laughs> just repurpose those. So, pod therapy listeners, if you join the Hey Buddy Nice podcast <laughs> make uh, your pitch. Patreon, you, uh, you won't enter any competitions, but we might be able to make something like poker chips. That would be fun. Mm. They could do that. It is a fun show. Nick and I have both been guests mm-hmm. on, on Hey Buddy. Uh, throughout time. I don't think Jacob has ever graced the podcast. No, no, no. And I'm just finding out right now that it's actually still on the air. So that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> for wonderful. Good for yeah. them. Everybody's a winner. You started this after the last Scoop Fest. Yeah. Yes. And you've just kept it going now. You record, though, like twice a week. We were recording okay, twice a week. It's well, about time you slowed down. We just had a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you got to sp- spread that out. That's yeah. how you get seven seasons. Okay? Yeah. You just keep on throwing them one at a time. 
Let the people wait. Get them all salivating <laughs> we on just, their Tuesday it's, night. It's just one long season. That's yeah, all it that's, is. Yeah. No, you got to break it into seasons. No. no. You know no. what? I can't help you if you won't let me. Okay? <laughs> We're following the ICS method of everything. Well, they're, no. they're on season two. We're on season, season two. They're on season two. <laughs> That's right. They, they adopted our model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. thousand. One thousand episodes a season. You can right. count however you want to count. Uh, Jacob sold me on it. Yeah. See, there yeah. you go. That's yeah, fine. You're welcome. Jacob is always right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a general rule, sure. <clears throat> this is his studio. Bring yeah. in the kangaroo. <laughs> oh, no. Kaz, calm down. Take, put your shirt back on. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> oh, Mr. Roo, you found me again. Did you just I say that? I can never escape. I can never escape. I'm here to put another shrimp on that Bobby. <laughs> Anyway. Call them prawns, okay? God. Do you yeah. don't call them shrimp? <laughs> they're, no, prawns. they're prawns. That's kind of gross, though. Prawns on the barbecue. Shrimp, you don't call them barbies? A shrimp is like this barbecue. big, a prawn is like this big. Yeah, show us again how big it is. That's, <laughs> that's really, it's weird how you show us with your mouth. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> There's other ways. There's other ways to demonstrate. I know, but they're not as fun. <laughs> that's true. Patreon.com slash therapy. You can hear all of the shenanigans with our friends. Hey, buddy, nice podcast. And I got to be honest, this show is 100% better without Nick or Whitney. <laughs> I knew it would always come down to this. It's, Eventually, I would this, get rid of both of them. This is Nick avoiding taking me back to the gym. That's mm. what it is. He almost made me throw up last time. Oh, did you work out with Nick? I did work out with Nick. How did that go? Uh, I It wasn't what I thought that. Nick was going to watch me do my my routine and tell me if I was doing the movements that right. Doesn't That's sound not what creepy. he did. No, nah. he, he because uh, you didn't talk out, to anybody else about that, did you? No, <laughs> yeah. I don't stretch. Oh, okay. And you're supposed to stretch apart. You're supposed to warm up. Yeah. And apparently, it's so much harder to actually do the movements right. Yeah. I was like, what he's the fuck? He's a stickler is, for that. He's though. A, yeah. He's like, you might hurt yourself, and I'm like, but it's easier. He's yeah. Like, but you you might get hurt. Yeah. And then you can't do it, and I'm like. So and he you get made more you benefit like, from doing it correctly as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I don't know what that's about, but okay. Yeah, he's really into it. He gets like into this like weird mental thing where he wants you to like be the muscle. He's <laughs> yeah. like, I want you to mentally imagine that muscle right now. Like, what's it thinking? What's its favorite color? Yeah. Like, Nick, I just want to hang out and finish these pancakes. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Nick, Nick, I'm sad. And he was like, well, why don't you do a bicep curl? And then maybe you'll calm down. That sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. So you did a workout with Nick. I did. And you got hurt. No, I just, uh, he he did this, the warm-up, and I was like, Nick, I'm going to throw up. And he's like, cool, sit there for two seconds. <laughs> oh, wow. And then I'll, let me go get these kettlebells. Uh, see, this is exactly <laughs> what I think it is. Exactly. This is also why I can't do it. Because I'd be like, oh, my God, are you okay? Let's get you some water. We should just stop. Let's go to the Dunkin' Donuts next yeah. door. Let's he said, relax. He did say, water fountain's over there. And then... I got to it and I'm like, I, I don't, I, Nick, how do I work this? And then yeah. it came over and pressed, there's a big button thing on it. Like, it yeah. looked to me like I was an idiot. Yeah. Do you not have water fountains in Scotland? We do, but they don't have, they're not, the button's usually on the tap. Oh, wow. It's, it's like a big button country. that's yeah. like on the, the Ours basin. just it's a big push. button that says it's a push. Big, it didn't it, even it say push. push. Yeah, I bet it did. It's so it you don't have to use back. your hands, yeah. I yeah. assume. You can yeah. use your groin. You can. Mm-hmm. Only that, if that you're wasn't a kangaroo. Expl- that wasn't explained to me. That's right. No. Well, I'm glad you've been so healthy during your Las Vegas trip. I know. I was. I'm. I was going to do it again, but you know, apparently he's sick. Yeah. Well, he's just avoiding all of us at this point. Maybe. But so is Whitney because they're genetically inferior. <laughs> but it's all right. They've been replaced. Foreign labor. Thank you. <laughs> you said 100 percent better because they're not on the show. I think it's because we are on the show. Yeah. No. That, that's what I meant. Yeah. Now, yeah. Jim, you do tomato. know we don't accept payment in spirit points, right? Oh, well, this got awkward fast. <laughs> it's Thanks, okay, everybody. <laughs> we weren't planning on paying you. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's totally fine. Didn't you hear Jim say free foreign labor? Yep. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. Low, low yeah. cost and or free. So We, we, we will do it for free. We will not do it for spirit points. Uh, that's fine because I'm going to use them <laughs> at some point. I will believe it when I see it. It's going to happen one day. <laughs> they do expire, one day, right? One day I I'll use my know. spirit points. <laughs> You'll see. I don't know. How do you not know? I feel like they have a half-life the way all things <laughs> decay into lead. Holy so, shit, we can't talk about the fucking spirit points. What's sorry, the first question? Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Fair. Let's jump into it. We got some great questions in today's show. Everybody's welcome. It's going to be fun. <laughs> question number one, attracted to someone new. Hey, everyone. Just came across your podcast recently, and I'm obsessed with you. Thanks for giving me something to look forward to every week. Well, I hope you like the weird one. <laughs> yep. Glad we had you until now. The problem, I find myself constantly worrying about how I feel with my relationship. Recently, I've become attracted to someone I volunteer with, 
and I'm thinking of him a lot. In addition to this, I do sometimes miss being single and the excitement of getting to know someone new, and I love getting attention from other people. Is it okay to be in a relationship and want attention or desire from other people? Is it normal to also develop crushes? I love my significant other very much, and it would wreck me if we broke up. But I'm constantly worrying if I should break up because of these desires for other guys. What to do? Is this a sign I should end my relationship? The hard part is I know there's no rule book or, uh, for life or relationships, and the decision is ultimately up to me. But I don't trust me. Help, Anonymous. Jim, I want you to reread a sentence in there. Yeah. There was a sentence in there that was, uh, I love my boyfriend so much, and it would crush me if we I broke love up. my significant other boyfriend very much. It would wreck me if we broke up, but I'm constantly worrying. But, but, but I'm what? Constantly. Uh-huh. Yeah, keep going. Worrying if I should break up because of these desires for other guys. So it would wreck you if you broke up. Yes. And yet you're wondering if you should break up. Okay. So don't break up. So I'm, I'm just, I, I gravitated towards the wording in that sentence. I like that. Okay. Also, the word but in a sentence usually serves to negate anything that appears before the word but in that sentence. How scholarly. Uh, I mean, that's the way sentence structure is, is put together, <laughs> generally. Yeah! <laughs> Grammatical coach Jacob! <Yeah! laughs> You've just been syntaxed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Jim, does, is there a... Uh, is there a psychological term in one of your in one of your books that you had Fancy when you books. were trying to get a doctorate? <laughs> yeah, um, that would that would describe like the grass is always greener on the other side. Man, I think a lot of people think it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's wrong to like want to be desired. That's sure. not weird. And that like the there's nothing about this email that's weird. To not me. at all. Right. Not, like, not even a little. Bit. You're volunteering. You're meeting yeah. people in social circles. I think it's natural to feel an attraction to them. A lot of people do this thing where they go, oh, no, I have feelings or I like a person. I must not be destined to be with my real person. Okay. It's like, can't those two things coexist at the same time without one negating the other? But it's a good question because if you're – con, I mean, the the writer says, I'm feeling like hella attracted. I'm summarizing. Uh, I believe that was, you know, (laughs) give or take. A lot of use of the word hella. I feel like that was pretty much what we said. Hella attracted to this other person. So, foreigner friends, what what say you on this topic? I'm sure you guys do things different. I mean, obviously, things get really weird in Australia, mm-hmm. but that is the land down under. <laughs> yeah. So, it's pretty much the beating genitals of the earth. Um, it would have been nice. Said. It would have been nice some context of how long they'd been with their mm. significant mm, other. Okay, as well. Because that point. like can make a difference. To, I think it does make a big difference. Because it's been two weeks. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. any, I think anything under a year as well. Okay. Like when they're talking about like breaking up with them and things like right. that. Is this the person I'm meant to be with or yeah. whatever? If I'm having feelings of being attracted to other people, yeah. I'm assuming the relationship's I mean, been around for for a minute. Yeah. 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 We, we should assume that because yeah. yeah. obviously there's an inner conflict here. Yeah. I mean, I think it's very normal to be attracted to other people. And still be in a relationship if you're not, like, doing anything with those feelings. Like, yeah. that's very normal to, like, obviously you're going to look at other people and think other people are attractive, stuff like that. That's very normal. I think it's very normal to want to feel desired right. by other people. That's very normal. Especially depending on what you're getting in your relationship as well. Sure. Some people aren't very, <laughs> like, it depends what your other partner expressive, is like. Maybe? Yes, yeah, very yeah. expressive with their right. how they say things to you and right. things like that. So if you're not getting that right. attention from your partner, but that's just how they are, yeah, and it's nice to get compliments from other people, that's okay. That's a really good point because I think a lot of people, the, the more sturdy your relationship becomes, over time it's likely to lose that expressiveness. And some of the novelty of other people being impressed with you feels really good. I mean, whenever yes. your partner of, you know, I've been married for 20 years. Jacob's been married for 45, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> give or take. Golden one. I mean, it's lovely whenever your wife says, oh, you look great today. Like, thanks. It would you know, be. But yeah, <laughs> I've, I've heard it's nice. I, uh, one day you yeah, right, great. Right. When I imagine that happening, it seems like <laughs> it, it seems would be like nice. like a nice day. But yeah, I mean, somebody you don't know that you, you know, have no connection with when they stop and go, oh my gosh, you look amazing. Wow, thank you. Like, there's just something about, I think, a fresh perspective that yeah. probably would be nice. So there's definitely nothing wrong with that, those kinds of things. I think it's definitely, you don't want to be acting on those things. I mean, if you feel like you're going to start acting on those feelings, yeah. that's when you need to look at your relationship and say, maybe that 
isn't right. Yeah. Like the right relationship for me, the one that I'm in. Right. If you're constantly feeling, I don't know, like Attraction your needs aren't being else. met yeah. or yeah, you're attracted to other people. I mean, yes and no, right? Because I think we we all agree, I think, some amount of attraction, normal, don't don't yes. overthink this, yeah. live your life. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. But I think what I'm hearing you say, Kez, is if that becomes to the point where it's like distracting to you, yes. it's always happening, there's a deeper question here of, do you really want the attention of mm-hmm. your partner? You seem to care about them, but how do you care about them? Yeah. I'd also be curious to know if there was other stresses going on that were affecting it, whether that be with the partner mm. currently that meant they weren't getting giving or giving the attention right normal you know so they've kind of fo- now focusing on this other person who is and it could be it could feel like a lot to them but it might just be like if you take a step back and look at it it might just be the most basic mm. attention but it feels like a lot because of other situations yeah Oh, could the crush just be because they're spending so much time with that person? Yeah. Honestly, so what's interesting is in in relationship work, one of the things that we try to usually do with couples is try to give them this idea of we don't want you trying to defend your relationship because most Mm -hmm. of the time that turns toxic. Yeah. It's like, let me see your phone. Let me me know where your location is. Let me follow you to work. Who are you talking to? Who do you know? Who's Becky? God damn it. (laughs) And so like we don't want that for you because Those are the relationships that always do super well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Those those are the friends that you hear and you go, they're going to make it. Yeah, Yeah. they're doing fine. (laughs) One day we'll be so secure like them. (laughs) So when you see that, it's really icky and therapists don't like it. And a lot of times couples will come to us and there's been a breach, right? There's been a break of trust something's gone wrong and this is something that one partner is saying is they're saying you know therapists tell them that they're wrong tell them that they need to be transparent and reestablish trust and there's be accountability and we'll usually say yeah they're some yes to some mm-hmm. extent but that's not sustainable mm-hmm. long term it's really more what you're talking about brogan where we don't want to defend the relationship we want to ask how to make this relationship so strong that it's kind of not vulnerable to an intruder or to yep. an external force But this point about proximity is a fact. You spending tons and tons and tons and tons of time volunteering with this person, it starts to become this question of like, do you have any kind of connection with your regular partner or do you just share a house with them, you know, and technically a relationship? Mm -hmm. And that's when that bond can start to morph, which, again, doesn't mean that you shouldn't be hanging out with the volunteer friend. But does ask this question of what's the health of your relationship right now? And is that a question you need to discuss? I have a question for you, Ryder. And that is, have you and your volunteer friend, A, do you believe that they are also attracted to you? And uh, B, if so, have you and that friend had a discussion about this attraction? That'll get weird. Because that discussion is an early step. But it's a big step. That would be a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where there's like a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of tension. And yeah. I find myself thinking about that's you. That's one thing. Cool. But if it's becoming this thing, it's like, okay, our overtures are getting more obvious. Yeah. This is taking a turn. Like, are you emailing yeah. that friend and being like, hey, you know, it's so funny how we find the, the, each other. Like, we, yeah. we think each other's hot. You like, up, eggplant, eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Which would be the first conversation, though? The conversation with the friend or the partner? It's a good question. I mean, I don't love telling the partner that there's mm. something to be concerned about if there isn't anything to be concerned yeah. about. But I do like the point of coming to the partner and saying, how are we doing? Just, you know, d- not even bringing up that there's anything else, but just internally checking in and saying, am I overly connecting with other people right now? Is there an absence in my relationship? Doing kind of a status check. Mm. I think it'd be a good idea. But you're right. I mean, at some point there could be a, we probably need to talk about this. Yeah. Where do you stand on this one, Wayne? Uh, I, th- I I say just get all three people together in a room. Polyamory. <laughs> yep. Polyamory. Yeah, that was probably that the move. That solves a lot of problems. Set up a Yeah. The bonobos were right all along. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's the answer to your question is, has this person met your partner? Would yeah. they be into stuff? You yeah. know? Well, a, as you can see that my joke answer means I don't have an answer. Okay. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> No, but it's a tricky question, you know, and I think it comes down to what the writer said at the end where the writer said, look, I realize this is a very personal question. There is no rule book on this. A lot of it's going to come down to my relationship, my decisions, you know, but I don't trust myself right now. And that last sentence writer is the thing that really catches my ear is I'm not feeling like I trust myself. And the one thing I don't really want to happen is a play it by ear 
let's just hang out and, and feel the vibe kind of angle. Yeah. I don't love that. It will usually steer in the direction of this forbidden romance is blossoming. And that doesn't tell us anything. That's not going to tell us you're destined to be together. It doesn't tell us that that's where the real chemistry is. It doesn't even tell me that your relationship, your primary relationship is a bad one. It's just the tendency of humans to get caught up in it and they'll find each other and it feels like it's exciting. And I don't want you to live your life on accident. I I want you to feel intentional about it. If you've developed a primary relationship and that has something for you and it's serving needs in your life and you're proud of it and you worked for it. I, I don't want you to lose it by accident. And and I think that's what happens in these situations. So pulling aside like you are in writing this letter, reflecting on where you're at, what you want, and what's important to you is a really important thing to do in your life. And, and I don't know how old you are, writer. I'm in my late 30s, knocking on 40. And at my stage of life, I need to sit down. And if I were in that situation, I'd be asking myself, Jim, what is going on with you and like, what do you want in your life right now? Cause you don't need to get caught up in a throuple. You know, that's, <laughs> that's just a lot of work. Sounds exhausting. It does. You know, I mean, who's paying for dinner? I don't know. I mean, do we well, take turns? Is you got turn? that 20% up, off my head. I'm paying for <laughs> dinner. Everybody can Venmo me back, but I've got it. Cause that ARP card is money. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, asking yourself what your values are, what you want in your life. That's really important. I mean, if you're like in your early 20s and you're stating around and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm kind of in a serious thing, but like I'm still meeting other people and I don't feel settled yet. Okay, then then that's kind of authentically where you're at. But I don't want it to happen by accident. So I, I really hope that you'll continue to be contemplative about this. Sit, think about it, do your life on purpose, uh, because it'd be a shame if this happened by accident. So I think we're all on the same page with this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're normal for having these feelings and be careful. Don't let anything accidentally bubble up. That never goes well. I mean, you're never happy with it. And every time I see couples form that way, even when the the previous partner's gone and the new relationship has begun, oh boy, do they end up in therapy quickly. Mm-hmm. And it's like, gosh, I don't know what it is. I just don't trust them. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I wonder why. Okay. Well, no let's reason. Work on that. Who yeah. could possibly have predicted that? I don't want them to volunteer with anybody ever. <laughs> Why? You just hate the poor? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, just, I, mean, I know yes. their type. <laughs> Paid <laughs> work only. <laughs> they have a philanthropist <laughs> kink. I can't have it. I do kind of hate the poor, though. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Great question, writer. Good luck on this one. Uh, really hope for updates. We always like updates on these things to find out how they're going. But yeah, uh, love the honesty. So continue to be honest with yourself. Check on the status of your relationship. Make sure that you just are investing in that to the extent that you want to. But this could be an early warning sign that maybe it's not working out, and maybe you need to consider that too. But follow your heart. It'll all work out. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are discussing helping skills for non-therapists. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Ben Don, Malia, Richard, fucking Macy, a sunny boy, University Jeff, Samantha Cohn, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Slurpy Kai, motherfucker, Sandra McWall. And our trivia today is brought to you by our friends at Hey Buddy, Nice Podcast. It is. Uh, so we've got some questions for you. They're, what are they called again? So this is safe. Uh... Connections. Connections, yeah. Okay, so you both know the answers. We do. Yeah. Does Kez know the answers? I have no fucking idea. No. You're in the game. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, that's how this you're, works. You're likely to win. You're also yeah. mic'd oh, up. I'm, I have the worst memory in the world. <laughs> you know that. I don't Great. know if you've Kez, ever heard our show. Kez, you're on my great. team. <laughs> <laughs> you're on my go. team. Why? Jacob and Kez versus Oh, Jim. God. <laughs> You'll do uh, fine. So we've got... First category is geography. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I think we've got 12 questions, so we can do four You'll do fine, Jacob. I like it. We can do two each. I know the category, so you'll be Are fine. You? Yeah. You got your questions on you? Is that the... <laughs> we didn't check that. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. I threw it at you last second. <laughs> uh, I take it this is the ones I sent you as well. Yeah, included. you do your s- for, like two of your six, then I'll do two of my six. Okay. There you so go. You, you I'll start. go first. Okay. Here we go. So for the first one, you have to find the connection. Okay. New Orleans. Egypt. Oh, this is one of those categories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Topics. Yeah. Paris. Are we buzzing Wait, are we in? just like yelling or yeah, what's can, happening? You can buzz. New, New Orleans, Wait. Egypt, Paris. New York. Buzz. Water. They have rivers. No. That's what I meant. They're on rivers. No. 
Am I? I is think this the one that are. I think I saw? Are, I think I saw the answer to this. I want to read Oh, wait. You say New Orleans, Paris, is this, Did Egypt. you write them in order to what I was seeing you do before? Or have you changed it up? Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you, you've probably seen it then. <laughs> I may know the answer. This is a great conversation. Nope, this is disqualified. <laughs> Let's All go. Right, wait, wait, wait. So it's, give, give them to me again. New Orleans, New Orleans. New Orleans. Egypt. Paris. New York. Venice. Rome. Rio de Janeiro. God damn it. The river thing was true. I mean, not really Rome. There are rivers in Rome, but there's not like a river that... All rivers lead to Rome, man. <laughs> That's not the saying. Mm-hmm. I... I don't know. Oh, okay. Ooh. Let's see. What else? Uh, medieval England. I mean, is it uh, named after English royalty? No. no. Egypt? Like the uh, Duke of Orleans. Yeah, what I don't, else I, that's got? why Egypt I didn't have on there. Maybe it's not hmm. what I think it is. Duke of Orleans? I don't Depressing think that's right. places? Yes. The Sahara yes. Desert. Yeah. yeah. Let's go with that. Depressing. Pa- no, okay. Mm-hmm. No points around. What it's, was the. Uh, okay. So, no points. What uh, was the, the thread? Uh, themed hotels in Las Vegas. Oh, oh <laughs> Jesus. You know, okay. where you live. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's possible we were both overthinking that. I think yeah. we were. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Now FYI, this right is right not side. a hard. This is not Thank hard. You. This is not hard. Like, Thank you. This is a very it, easy. It's good. Yeah. All this right. is a very easy quiz. I like okay. it. Go ahead, bro. And then for me. So, William, Henry, Stephen, Richard, and John. I wasn't listening to any of those. What? William, <laughs> Henry, William. Mm-hmm. Stephen, Richard, John. Yes. Buzz? Yeah. Kings? Yes! Oh! Wow! Yeah. British kings! Oh, that was easy. Oh. Yeah, right. just name English people. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Henry, Stephen, Henry, Richard, John. Okay, One point I like Jacob. this. Yeah. God damn it, I forgot she's on your team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Friends. Home Improvement. The Drew Carey Show. All right, so this is 90 sitcoms. Buzz, 90 sitcoms. Nope. God damn that, that, That's half of the answer. All right. Yeah. Uh, so the Drew Carey show, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Buzz. Fuck, I know what it is now. I know what it is. Go yeah. on, go for it. Uh, TV shows Penn has appeared in. Uh, Penn and Ortella, yeah. So wow. All right. They Two also for have Dahmer and Greg and You're Lois and Clark. Really crushing with this Superman. outsourcing to foreign labor. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> <laughs> the Kings was like Damn. such a like. The foreigners oh, really do it better than Americans. Like, that that yeah. I just, yeah. I just no got through replying to an email over here. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to the last three questions. <laughs> there's only been two. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's been three. Oh, okay, been yeah. I believe there's been three. All right. <clears throat> Wallace Shawn, Roger Clinton, Cloris Leachman, Ray Charles, Michael McKean. Ooh. Uh Buzz. Uh, Scottish. Nope. Nope. Okay. Damn. Uh, <laughs> None of them are Scottish. <laughs> Rhodes and who, Las who was Vegas. Who the first one you said? Wallace Shawn. Oh, I don't know who that is then. Yeah, Sean. from Princess Bride. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I read everything. him again. Wallace Shawn. Inconceivable. Sean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roger Clinton, Claudius Leachman, Ray <laughs> Charles. Michael McKean. Okay, Ray Charles is really fucking me up. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of those feel correct. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, Ray Charles? I know Michael McKean uh, isn't Roger blind. Clinton throws you oh, off less than Ray Charles. Buzz. Who's Roger buzz. Clinton? Buzz, it's buzz, 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 buzz. Brother. Buzz. Oh, wow. Right. Buzz. Okay. Yes. Is it Jacob. everyone who's played a butler? No. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> that would have been Charles good. Ray Charles has played I mean, a butler. I don't know. A very ineffective <laughs> butler. They all play saxophone? I don't know. No. <laughs> Oh, piano. Do they all play piano? No. Damn it. Are we wow. giving up? Never. <laughs> Why? Ray Shaw, Charles, give, me, give me one more time. The one more time. I Bill don't even Clinton, know this answer. They've what? all slept with the same intern. No. One more time. Wallace Shawn. Oh, it's going to be such a Roger Clinton. Claudius Leachman. Claudius Leachman. Ray Charles. Michael McKeon. They all have hit songs. No. no. They're all in cone heads. No. All right. Then I got nothing. Oh, wait. Have... No, go on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was just going to ask a question. They all uh, you fucked might, Bill Clinton. You might know that. You'll know it, so okay. don't. Oh, I don't remember your questions. Is it like, is it to do with TV? Yes. Okay. It's to do with TV. They've okay. all been on TV? <gasps> They've well, all appeared on the Arsenio Hall show. This <laughs> They've all 
will appear in an episode of The Nanny. Correct. Oh. oh. Jesus Christ, I don't care about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ray Charles. Ray Charles played oh, I remember Franz. That. Grandma's boyfriend yeah. for like yeah. five episodes. Wow. Yeah. I've I watched the nanny yeah. multiple times. I should have known that. This right. seems like you, a bad you time to me asking. But the yeah. nanny was a terrible television. Oh. Fuck you, Jacob. <laughs> that's a, that's a, it's fucking that's a good. Pile of garbage. <laughs> it is my life. It was a pile of garbage <sighs> when I was around was and like, it was coming it is- out. Everything to me. Uh, yeah, but checks out. Well, at the moment, mm-hmm. at the moment, it's everything to Brogan. Yes, you unironically Wait for the next like thing. the show. I fu- I have watched that show so many times. Currently in my room at the Rio, it's, I have my hard this drive. This is like your binge. I have my hard yeah, drive plugged Bergen's into the TV. Right I was now. watching it before I left. Everybody's got the this. Thing. Is an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> we can do better. All right. Well, no, I we believe can't. the score right now is two to zero. I think it's like four to zero. I don't think that's true at all. Also, you should we lose points for using three. foreign language. Yeah, you've got, you're, that's three zero. God there damn we it. go. One of them. No, nobody got the Do hotels you know what? one. Yeah, I'll be on, for the questions. next round, I'll there be on your go. side, okay? That's right. We both get we'll to share cheap for uh, You know what? <laughs> Veto. <laughs> ah, <shit. laughs> damn it. I forget he could just do that. <laughs> I'm not going to start oh, listening to the, the questions Vito now. Cards. You got the Veto cards. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's be honest. The quest is really just Kez versus Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Jim versus himself. Yeah. Because I just don't know where any of these are going. Question two, helping skills for non-therapists from Felicia. Hey, pod therapy guys and Whitney. Ha! Joke's <laughs> on you. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Another question for you. For the people who work in helping fields that aren't therapists, I'm a high school teacher, for example, what skills and strategies can you pass along that you think would be helpful in our jobs? A lot of what kids tell me is not in the mandated reporter lane. They talk about breakups, friend drama, and figuring out their life path. And these are the most common things kids want to talk about. But I always feel like I could be more helpful. Teaching psychology has given me a lot of information that's been helpful for this, but I'm not a clinician, so I'd love any feedback or ideas. Thanks, Felicia. Pronouns are she and her. So, Jacob, you've been hanging out with therapists now for like six years. Has this impacted your career at all? Has it made you a better person? I uh, I wasn't listening. Yep. <laughs> it made him a qualified life coach. Yeah. He listens no. better. <laughs> so better. I'm an excellent listener. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, and like, no, I, I don't know. Has it changed the way you talk to people? Have you have you stolen any therapisty phrases and used them in real life? I don't think so. I don't think I have. Uh, maybe I have, though. I don't know. Uh, I've but, stolen phrases from you. Yeah. Like crazy. I'm... I hear that scratching, too. It's fine. It's, it's fine. the gerbil trying to escape. <laughs> no. Uh, it won't. Um, I, I probably think about uh, things a little more through uh, a, a lens of, of mental health care. Yeah. Uh, more than I did before. Yeah. I think that'd, be, that'd probably be the biggest change. Yeah. I feel like this comes up a lot where people, that's the one big difference between therapists and other healthcare professions is we definitely have phrasing that we're using a lot. That's about like slowing down and we, all these classic phrases, right? Right sizing or I'm going, let's think about how to language that emotion or whatever bullshit we say. But like, I do think that you could take that into non-therapy worlds and find yourself just talking to people differently or trying to understand perspectives or not having a right and a wrong in a situation, but just trying to be solution focused or whatever. I mean, those things seem like they would show up, but you three have sampled uh, therapy dialogue and, you know, languaging. Does this actually help in your real lives? Do you apply any of this shit? I don't know if I would say I actively applied it, but it, well, you're also stealing cocaine from an evidence. Locker. Well, there's that. I don't know that we can help you. No, I don't have morals to begin with. That but that yeah gets in the way. It does. It does make me think about it more. Yeah, I'm more conscious of it because I suppose because I think about my own mental health more. Yeah, listening to pod therapy and stuff, and it makes me less judgmental, I guess, or less. I'm, Maybe I'm more very, approachable. I don't even know that. I'm not that approachable. <laughs> I think you're approachable. <laughs> Thank you, You're Jim. very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You, you see Vegas me. Okay. Yeah. Scottish you is just a terrible it's person. A fucking dick. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I suppose, I mean, I'm generally very quick to anger in general. I mean. Really? The, t- the type of job I do. 
Progan, I did not know this about you. <laughs> I don't know if you you're are being... cheerful. <laughs> I don't know if you're joking or no, not. No, not at all. You're always <laughs> cheerful. Like you're just a oh, pleasant person. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, your your fifty dollars will be. You, under you the... work <laughs> in criminal justice. I, I work for I work for a law firm doing anti money laundering, which is essentially the job that no lawyer wants to do. So they get very frustrated and very angry with us. Yeah. As do clients, because who the fuck wants to give over their passport? Oh. So wow. we're fighting two sides of it. So I get really angry because I'm like, I'm trying to keep you fuckers out of jail. Wow. Um but I, I it does make me slow down and think, you know, I know especially when it's a colleague who I get on well with and mm. I'm like, they're they don't act like this. Calm down, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I don't know. I don't Maybe. actually use actual therapy words in it, but fair enough. And and the writer's not asking about therapy words. I think yeah. it's more like therapy thinkings, postures. I mean, yeah, therapists or the the writer in this case is a teacher and is saying, mm-hmm. okay, I I I'm not trying to be a therapist at these kids, but I'm the person in their ecosystem and I'm trying to be sensitive. Yeah. I mean, I think that's it. I think I think. Um... What Brogan just said w- was, uh, you know, you're, you're speaking to somebody, and this and this works with uh, with kids in your class, or whatever. Uh, when you're speaking to somebody, and it's, oh, you you don't usually behave this way. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, let let's let's figure out what's going on here. There seems like there's a different problem here, and I think the word for that is being empathetic. Yes, I like that. Yeah, I, th- I think it, I think the more empathetic you are with people, and the more you kind of think, uh, rather than rather than react to uh, a stimuli put forth to you by one of your students, which I, I bet uh, is occasionally trying, yeah. uh, shall we say? Yeah. I, I bet the, the, there's an occasional trying day for you here and there. The proverbial nails on a chalkboard. Uh, instead of reacting to... Uh, did they say how old the kids are that they teach? I get the impression it's like middle and high school. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Oh, it's high school. Oh, there you go. Yep. So... When one of these little shits <laughs> says something rude to you or something stupid to you. Uh, Ruder or stupid. I would say try not to react to it. Right. Try to act out of uh, what your own goals. Right. And those can be uh, goals of, of showing empathy towards the person, uh, exploring what's going on with them. All in the interest of trying to get them to sit quietly through your goddamn class <laughs> <laughs> and not be as much of a little shit as they usually are. I like that. I think also a, a trick that you can use that you can steal from the therapy room and bring into a teacher life is talking about behavior rather than people. So always saying, you know, what's what you're doing here doesn't look like it's working for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of saying, like, this is a bad kid. Yeah. Right. Or you're an unhappy person or you're blah, blah, blah. Just you seem that this. kid's nuts. That kid is nuts. Yeah. To be able to instead describe behaviors, to be able to say, hey, you seem uh, disappointed in this or you seem like you're having a hard time with your friend right now. Um, you don't seem to appreciate what your friends are saying behind your back or whatever, like but not characterizing who they are as people. Which is a very therapy thing to do, and and sometimes it, <laughs> it in couples therapy it makes people very angry uh, because they'll say, "I need you to tell my spouse here that they're an asshole and they're <laughs> wrong or they're bad or what they're doing is wrong or whatever." And a lot of times we tend to equalize and normalize because we want that person to feel like they're not being judged, not to be scared away, but we do want them to develop the ability to question why they're doing what they're doing. You know, oh, you're attracted to your volunteer partner. <laughs> Um, see, she's a bad person, Jim. She doesn't really love me. Tell her that. Like, no, uh, let's talk about where that's coming from and why you feel that way. And just talk about the behavior that you are experiencing and talking about it as an experience, which I think would apply to high school pretty quickly. I think so. I remember when I was a high school teacher and I had this rotten kid. God, she was a pain in the ass. She was a staff member's daughter and it was like Mm. an administrator's daughter. Yeah. So this kid could get away with murder and was doing it. And like every teacher was so Killed fucking sick. Three of people. Yeah, just a murderer. <laughs> just murderer, coke dealer, you know, just yeah. terrible stuff. Money laundering. The two worst things you can in be. In Scotland. Unforgivable. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, just weird stuff, you know, all over the place. And I was just so fed up with this kid. I could not get her to stop. And she would always like get other kids to like glom onto her bullshit and they would just lose control of the class. And so I was, I was so fucking furious. And one day I yelled at her. I was done with her. And I, I like was about to kick her out of the class and said, fuck it, let's just end the class. And so we get to the end and I go furiously writing an email to her parent who works in the building. 
And as I'm writing it, I, I like halfway through this thing and I'm like, no. And it just like dawned on me. I think I've told the story before. Uh, this is going to be the 800th goddamn email that this parent has gotten. They are not even noticing this anymore. And when they go talk to their kid, they'd be like, Jobin, does, you know, is pissed at you. You need to blah, blah, blah. And the kids would be like, fuck Jobin. I don't care. And so like, I changed the letter right there. And I, I empathize with that part. Yeah. I mean, that part <laughs> solid. And I, I changed the letter and I wrote to the parent, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, um, Haley is really trying and I really see it and we're still working through some things and we haven't had a, a perfect day yet, but I see it and I think she's a great kid and I'm not giving up on her. And I said something like that, you know, and then that went to the mom and the mom pulled daughter aside that night and was like, Hey, I got a really nice email from Mr. Jobin today. Beat the shit out Beat of him. the living <laughs> shit out of this kid. <laughs> How dare you make that would have been feel good <laughs> <about daughter. laughs> Just dangled her off of a bridge. You know how Mike Tyson's <laughs> training for his upcoming fight? By using this kid as a punching bag. <laughs> Tied this that child. mother sold her child to Mike Tyson. If I get a nice t- email from a teacher again, yeah. you will not live to yeah. see it. Went great. So the, the kid talked to the mom, and then the next class, the kid came up to me and said, hey, did you send my mom an email? And I was like, yeah. Nope. And, yeah, no, I don't <laughs> fucking talking about you, liar. No, but the kid was like, you know, that 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 was really nice. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I know that we're still struggling. I know that we have a lot to grow in, but I'm really, I can see that you're trying really hard, and I really appreciate you. And just, like, went with that different route, which is very much a therapy skill, like, mm-hmm. it, which I didn't, I, I think I knew at the time. I think it was in grad school at the time when this happened. So I had learned about this theory called solution-focused brief therapy, mm-hmm. where you're focusing on what, things are going right and you're trying to shine a light on that instead of continually pointing out the problem because people are aware of the problem and a lot of times it doesn't do them any goddamn good so, so is it highlighting the solution so is it along the same lines as gentle parenting yeah it's it's basically kindergarten uh, teaching so whenever you're yeah. like oh i love how wayne is sitting at the reading rug crisscross mm-hmm. applesauce <laughs> oh now kez is doing it yeah. also we have a reading rug in the studio yeah, yeah. no i have a friend who, where else would who we was, read <laughs> i have a friend who was getting harassed online yeah for stuff uh pretty badly like a uh, homophobic transphobic stuff yeah and they, they decided to the best way to handle it was gentle parenting and just said no we we, we don't do that we don't do that here <laughs> <laughs> we this person turned around oh, and wow. now follows them on that social media that is and is so, so nice and comments on their stuff it's it's like i just think i needed somebody to explain it to me and yeah gent- so that fucking works yeah yeah so there are some keys in therapy land. And actually, Felicia, you would know this because uh, you are a patron, um, but I'm doing a series right now, a 10-part series. Mm. Yep. As successful as your ADHD one, which I signed up for and never listened to. You know what? <laughs> You're missing out. <laughs> and it also, by itself, diagnoses you. <laughs> just, if you like, can listen to it, you don't have ADHD. I was like, it's that the, easy. This is the most ADHD shit ever. I signed up for a six-hour course and I'm not going to listen to it. Listen. That's true. It is a 10-part <laughs> series in small 20 to 30-minute nuggets that is released every other week. But it is the keys uh, to being a therapist. It's the 10 questions every therapist should ask themselves. And some of the things we're covering in there are the fundamentals of therapy. And one of them is unlimited positive regard. Like, you should just find a way to like everybody. And I think whenever people perceive that and they perceive it as genuine, whether you're a high school teacher or you're trying to bust people for cocaine or for money laundering, Mm -hmm. if they think that you genuinely are trying to help them, I think that goes a long way. Oh, yeah. When you get them on site, it's so good. In your sights? Like a sniper rifle? Yes. Okay. Sometimes sometimes it's on site. Sometimes it's on site. Yeah. You know, it just depends on the day of the week. That makes sense. Yeah. Australians, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, <laughs> Deafening silence from no, down No, I mean, I often have to deal with this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I wouldn't have thought I would have had to in my job, but... Um, Are you also a money laundering <laughs> cop? Uh, I, I wish. I'd be getting a lot more money, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I mean, I work in re- retail and... Mm. It's oddly enough, like a lot of my coworkers, we all have like mental health issues. Mm. Um, yeah, like I have like, I have a lot of issues, but um, I hide them very well. So a lot of people, I don't know, just feel very comfortable talking to me about things. Mm. And because I've gone through a lot of stuff, I am um, very understanding of what a lot of people are going through. 
And I think, I don't know what it is about me, but people just seem very comfortable talking to me when they have issues. Approachable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know if they sense that I somehow understand for some reason. But um, I think a lot of people in retail just seem to have issues, whether it's just my, it's my place world. of, it's of work. Place. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But we, yeah, we have quite a few people, yeah, that seem to have issues, different things and stuff. Um, but I often get a lot of customers really weirdly, who are ordering balloons for, like, funerals. Oh. Um, so we do get a few people who come in who are getting them and they're like, oh, it's actually for a funeral. So you're dealing with people who yeah. are, like, going through the death of a family sure, member. Sure, you suddenly realize, oh, yeah. no. So you have to kind of, like, change your whole way of being with them because you're, like, some people want to celebrate the life. Some people are, like, dealing with it quite soon yeah. um, afterwards as well. So you have to, like deal with that and be very sensitive and mm. like um if you've got young staff members you'll kind of take over from them oh, yeah. and you'll do the the thing with the customer because yeah they're out certain of people aren't yet yeah. as good with it um but yeah we have like a few staff members who like trigger warning like we have like a few that are suicidal and things like mm -hmm. that um and there's a couple of us that will only like talk to those staff members because we've had like those experiences ourselves and we know the resources for them and our work has resources for different people like that and stuff. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different people with like anxiety issues at work and all different things. And just like a lot of kids are in uni as well. And I think there's a lot of uni pressure and different things that people are going through. Yeah. So we kind of have all discussions about uni stuff means... like that. Oh, university. Ah. <laughs> I knew that. It's the first three letters of a place where you work. <laughs> yeah, it's the first three letters of a lot of words, dude. We're Australian. We shorten everything. Anything yeah. to make things quicker and easier. Unicycles are also really stressful. Like, I yeah. mean, I don't know. Like, I'd have anxiety if I was one of those. <laughs> but that's, um, it but shows yeah, so, up in your work. Yeah, it's like literally, like, we have, like, so many resources in Australia in workplaces for oh, people. Wow. So there's, like, literally, like, someone that's employed um, at every workplace who's, like, sole job is like you call them. Really? And they handle like mental health. Really? Yeah. So you can like, there's mental health resources oh for goodness. everyone. That is um, amazing. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like great, yeah. but it is some, like, it's, it's not something. like, it's something. So wow. like you can contact them to like help you or your family. Oh my goodness. Um, so like there is something, it's not perfect, but there is something. And they are like very good about things like that. Wow. But it's just like, I feel like there's so many people <laughs> dealing with stuff like that, that it's just kind of like, oh, here's another one. Yeah. Can you talk to them? Because they've got problems. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. let's go have a chat. Yeah. But you bring it's up a really like good everywhere. point. I think for all of us who have been through therapy, myself included, if, if you've ever had to deal with mental health stuff, it makes you very comfortable talking about it with other people. Yeah. And there is this shared humanity yeah. where there people just kind of sense it on you. Like uh, you seem like a safe person, and they just start dropping hints. Yeah. You know that oh yeah, you know they'll casually mention oh, I kind of had a panic attack last night, but doing a lot better now. And then you kind of you know really give them permission yeah. to continue. You don't just dismiss. You can yeah. say hey. And the I've language been there. is different. Like there right. is like a different way of talking to people and getting things out of them. Like right. kind of. The different wording you use and things like that. So like, yeah, it's Good hard. Day, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to think like when the teachers like saying what is it that you can say and stuff like. Right. It is a lot of that, just like making them feel comfortable, and like the open ended questions and like right. stuff like that of like making them just feel comfortable of like being able to continue talking. Right. And like not shutting them down and just making it feel very calm and normalizing it yes. of like whatever they have to say to you. It's like completely normal. And like their feelings are very valid. Yes. Like it's yeah. That whole of just like that you've had those feelings before or it's not like odd to be that way. Like, right. I don't know. It's, it's hard oh, to no, explain. That's, that's but like, huge. yeah. Because I think especially for Felicia, I mean, you know, kids are used to being dismissed. Yeah. You know, like it's not normal. Told. That's just, you know, on with or, your, or just continue on with your day. Or, yeah. You'll say like, I'm sad. And, and everyone's like that. Like, yeah. Lots of people get sad. Anyway, yeah. do your fucking homework. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. you're being bullied. Everyone's being bullied. Right. Yeah. Don't that's worry. What kids go it through. gets better. And sometimes that's dismissive. Yeah. Right? No, it doesn't get better. And no, it's yeah. not okay. Right. You do. But also things do get better. Don't listen to Kaz. It's okay. No, it's on their own. No, as 
pretend that you we'll don't have... We'll take a short break, <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to answer another email. <laughs> You're this listening is Pod Therapy. To pod therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by our producers, Ben Don, Malia, Richard, fucking Macy, a sunny boy, University Jeff, Samantha Cone, Thunder, <laughs> Cougar, Falcon, Scoop, Slurpikai, Motherfucker, and Sandra McWaffle. And we are back to trivia, brought to you by Cheap Foreign Labor. Yeah. I mean, all right, you... You've met a lot of these people, Jim. I you might it. get this one right. I feel good about it. Jacob, you've probably met all of these He's people. He's not listening. He's waiting for Kaz. <laughs> Kaz has also met a lot of these people. All right, here we go. Piff the Magic Dragon. Here we go. Matt Franco. All right, is it just going to be that they all Don't met, take do it magic? Early. Is, is this just Las Vegas magicians? No. Oh, okay. yes. That's, that's not the linking <laughs> factor. Okay, okay. I hope it's going to be It more. may be true. Big all right, twist. all right. So we got to Matt Franco, Shin Lim. Eric Dittleman, Colin Cloud. Buzz. Yes. You can't buzz. Your team is already buzzed. Okay, fine. I'm All waiting. Right. I'm we'll, milking this. It's okay. This. We'll get to the end and he still won't get it. Uh, <laughs> Colin Cloud, Dan Sperry, Murray the Magician, Ooh. The Clairvoyance, and we'll end on Vinnie Grosso. I mean, I think I know what it is. Buzz. Go on. Magicians who have been on Penn and Teller's Fool Us. No. no. Shit. I think it's magicians that have been talked about on Ice Cream Social. No. no. You should have let Kez answer. Magicians All right. who have been on Penn Sunday School. No. Kez? Magicians? Or just anyone that's been on America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. <gasps> ah. yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> that wouldn't have gotten to that one. Wow. God. Damn, this foreign labor shit. Yep. <laughs> Americans suck. Go By on. the way, all of my answers were correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just not what he was thinking. Right. Yeah. yeah. But not the thing. Unfortunately, you must answer as pair of the sheet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kiev. Odessa. Krakow. Paris. London. <laughs> all the answers I could give. Okay. Uh, that wouldn't be on <laughs> Bergen yeah. Sheet. They're not on Bergen Sheet, though. Uh, yeah. Famous cities that are also cities in Texas? No. Okay. Oh, that would have been solid. You're not I 100 might not, miles away. I, I might not that. be wrong. I think you have <laughs> half that list yeah. easily. I think it's more Damn than Damn it, that, that would have been a good one. You're not 100 miles away, but... Kiev is throwing me off. Glasgow? It's, did you I say, believe it's also no, pronounced it Kiev. Might be Kiev. Yeah. Who knows? It's, it's spelled K-Y-I-V. Okay. I mean, I say uh, chicken Kiev. Mm. Yeah. But that's K-Y. Paris, London, Kiev. Odessa, Krakow. God. But damn. yes, I, I will give you Glasgow counts. I mean, uh, I feel like it's going to be like a World War II trivia thing. Uh, would, would Dublin count? No. Yes. Okay. <sighs> Places where leprechauns live? <laughs> oh. Yeah, those famous crack leprechauns. London, Paris, Places yeah. that Brogan has flown over? I don't fucking know. How are these harder than Smitty's questions? I don't know. These are hard. Well, these are hard. Think there's 28 answers to each question. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. We, it's it's to give you more of a chance, more linking. Yeah, but more those connection. answers don't count. Um, places. I, I keep thinking like history. Right. Okay. Let me say this. Don't overthink it. Oh, how do you even underthink it? I don't know. <laughs> cities. Oh. European cities. Yes! Holy oh. shit! Oh. Yes. Oh. oh my god! That is dirt low. <laughs> Whoa, I have no pride in that. Yeah. Jacob, I'm sorry I got that point. I feel bad about it too. I mean, taking it. I mean, it yeah, yeah, you got it. You it's got a it. dollar on the ground. I'm yeah. picking it up. But I have no joy. <laughs> Jim, I think you'll get this one. Oh my god. I'll take that bet. <laughs> I know. Now I'm feeling real good about it. Flower. Leaf. Mushroom. Feather. Oh fuck. Boomerang. Star. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, okay. Flower. Let's leaf, go let's go in order. Uh, mushroom. Let's, let's go a different order. Mushroom. Flower. Oh, 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 yeah. buzz! Yes. Items you can get in Mario. Yes, Mar Woo! Mario yes! Power. Yes! Yeah. <sighs> I'm this, crushing it! Everything's finally coming up. Yes! Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that I know not to think hard at all. No, not at I all. I have found my zen. 
Like, this, I've got this game <laughs> in my fucking hands. Let's go. This isn't like that days of the week bullshit question. That was hard. I, I love yeah. that. That was very hard. Uh, I love that because I got it right. Yeah. Uh, Balvenie. Lafroig. Buzz. Yes. Scotches. Yes. Oh, yeah. no shit. You brought him a <laughs> bottle of Lafroig. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> he oh. has so many bottles that he don't know what the fuck he's got. That's just, that's obviously. I love Jacob's how you got a glass question. and never filled it with yeah. anything. No, I had water. Oh. <laughs> All right. So round two, I think it's even now. It's definitely yeah. not even. It's I not even. It's no. very close. It's not to even. Being We're winning. Same. Yeah, yeah. Question number three, last question of the night. Being outgoing versus being shy from spring loaded scoop. Presented to us at our Reddit AMA 2024. Oh, great. Which went horribly, by the way. Oh, uh, it's too bad. Everybody was wondering. <laughs> uh, did terrible. Too but bad. Reddit's also a shithole and it's fallen apart over the years. At different times in my life, I'd probably describe myself sometimes as shy and other times as outgoing. I've seen some evidence that it is something I can practice at and improve, but I wonder if without constant work, I tend to slide into a mode of living that is comfortable. I just got back from Las Vegas where I was attending a sort of fan event for listeners of a dairy-based comedy <laughs> podcast. Without a doubt, it was a fun time that I greatly enjoyed, but sometimes with large groups, I tend to get quiet. Sometimes when meeting people in person that I know from the podcast message boards, I'd get tongue-tied with little to say. Other times in small groups, I'd be fine. I'm also fine hanging out alone with one person over a meal. Maybe it's just a weird time in my life right now, but if someone is really good at dealing with small groups of familiar people, should they still spend effort working on social skills? Or should they just try to find environments that are more conducive to their natural inclination? Thanks, Spring Loaded Scoop. Well, I've... this conference sounds shitty, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, Horrible, I don't know why they bothered. Yeah, why show up? I felt this question in my soul. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This is relatable. It's so fucking relatable. I, let me tell you, this is probably the reason why I do a podcast with Wayne. Okay. So that I can continuously have that Social connection. skill building. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I enjoy going to Scoop Fest a lot. I enjoy meeting the Scoops. I find it incredibly overwhelming. Yeah. I tend to shut down a lot and I know that people are come up and talk to me and try to talk to me and i'm like uh-huh yeah, cool. yeah. trying I'm, to be I'm, welcoming yeah but and it's I'm, taxing emotionally yeah like i had to use the game room to just sit and put my head down for a while because it was yeah. so overwhelming so yeah i i, I feel you but 100 percent, you do need to work on the skill uh not i don't mean that in a mean way but i mean it you will be you, better for you it. want to keep exercising 100 percent. it's a, it's a skill that atrophies very quickly yes and oh. once once you i'm still it, recovering from the covid shit mm -hmm. like i just mm -hmm. didn't talk to people yeah like, that was it yeah and it's it just it sucks it's so hard it's like losing weight mm. it's so, such an easy skill to lose and so hard to build it back up yeah so yeah, one hundred percent, and it's it's gonna it's gonna be hard and it's gonna fucking suck, but when you have those connections with people, your life will be better for it. Yeah, you know, it'll make everything so much easier, including your mental health. Mm. Speaking Solid from personal piece. experience, Wayne, uh, what do you think about? Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily to say that you have to be social one hundred percent percent of the time. Yes, it's like. Years ago, when I was younger, in social situations, my go-to was basically put on a persona and okay. like be constantly on, mm. uh, constantly being funny, making jokes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that it becomes exhausting. You yes. can't you can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so even at Scoop Fest, I think all of us in this room were somewhat more approachable. Mm -hmm. I think being mm -hmm. that we talk on airwaves, yeah, um, which is fine. Yeah, happy to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then group situations happen, and it, like Brogan said, it becomes overwhelming. There were times I just had to excuse myself, walk away, sit down by myself for a little bit. Yeah. It's just to, whether it's to recharge or just to not have to, I mean, it sounds rude saying not deal with people when right. you're at this event, which is about bringing people together. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, yeah, if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't have shown up the next day kind mm -hmm. of thing. So Nick, Whitney and I talked, we talk about this every Scoop Fest, Nick and I do, but you know, with Whitney this time, we, we also kind of chatted about it. And this is very true. And I think the two of you have kind of crossed over now into people that are welcome on the stage, you know, mm -hmm. to do things. And mm -hmm. 
And, you know, it, it is a different experience because you're still just fans. I mean, like, yeah. we go to Scoop Fest as fans. Like, we're just, we listen to ICS. We hang out with this thing. We love the show. We love mm-hmm. the community. That's why we're there. Uh, we just happen to have something that a member of ICS is on, so people give a fuck, you know, and they mm-hmm. want to be a part of that too. But, like, once you're in that circle, there is this sense of, I am now visible at all times, right? Yeah. And like whenever I'm interacting with a group of people, there is this sense, like you were saying, Wayne, of feeling on or feeling like I'm, I guess I'm performing now, you know, and I'm not trying to, I want to just be here and be present, but inherently there is a, what's being said, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so it is draining, but it, it's not to say, I don't think any of us are saying it's the people are draining in a bad way. It's just the experience, yeah. the context of being visible and, feeling like you're on or there's a spotlight on you and you're not just disappearing into the background is different. It's about your personal social battery, not anybody else. Yeah, Yeah, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It has nothing to do with who you're talking to, Mm -hmm. which is interesting because just like the writer, you can get into those one-on-ones or those small group things. And for me, I found that to be very easy. Like Mm -hmm. I I met up with folks at, uh, you know, different restaurants that I just heard about. I saw on the discord, Hey, we're all meeting for breakfast or we're going to have coffee. And I just, Dive in on that. There'd be three, four people there. Mm-hmm. And that was lovely because it was yeah. like, okay, great. I don't think any – people are more interested in their coffee than me. We're just hanging out. We're just chatting. Uh, I can just kind of be myself mm-hmm. here, but then you get into that larger context. And it is – it's like a muscle. You know, you do have to keep using it or you do lose it. Mm-hmm. But this is an interesting question about do do we as people have permission to say, you know what? I know the kind of person I am. I don't like certain contexts that doesn't come naturally. Maybe I just give myself permission to be authentic and only find settings that kind of match my energy level. I think there's something to be said for that. What do you think, Kaz? Well, I was going to say, um, I like still don't necessarily always like to be around people. I get I that. I thought you were going to say Wayne. <laughs> oh, that too. Um, <laughs> get that like, you know, social drain as well, some things like that. Um, right. I was going to say for them as well to find their people, like find people that they can be their self around and they can share when they are feeling drained and they need a bit of a break and things like that. So like having Wayne, having me as his partner, like I understand when he's feeling certain ways and always had a bit too much. Now it's too much for him. Mm -hmm. Like I, for me, I'll put on that like suit of armor Mm -hmm. and I'll go out and like, I can be the person that's like draw energy away. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can, if he's talking to people, but I feel like he it's been a bit too much for him. I can speak for him sometimes Mm -hmm. Or, like, if it's an uncomfortable situation for him and I know that he maybe doesn't want to say certain things, I'll say it for him so it doesn't take too much from him, different right. uncomfortable situations um, that I know, like, he gets awkward in certain times. So you, it's very important to find your people that yeah. will make you feel comfortable. So, like, if there was a couple of times when he wasn't sure if he wanted to do certain things. And I said, let's just go and see what it was like. And then afterwards he was like, I'm so glad we went and did that because that was something I really wanted to do. So, but if, if we got there and it was like, wasn't okay, then we would have just left. So have people around you that you can actually share with you, with them, how you feel and they can be supportive. And because you need those people to be like, I've had enough. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. And that you feel comfortable enough to say, I want to go home. I, yeah. This isn't what I wanted to do. Well, you said something in there that I really liked. And I think the writers, you know, kind of bringing up is, do we have permission to find our people and also yeah. find like the size of engagement that works yeah. for us? Because that's fair. You know, I think that we all can be like that. If you say, oh, you want me to come out with you? How many people are going? You know, it's yeah. like, yes. oh, 12. Yeah. I'm not such a uh, flake. Like I, <laughs> maybe I'm, not. I flake on people so much. Like I, <laughs> I will say to people when they want to be my friend, yeah. I'm not a good friend. Okay. Because I will not give them go- a pamphlet. Yeah. It's like, I'm, <laughs> thank you for your interest. You want to go and hang out? I'm probably not going to come and hang out with you. Low. Yes. Mm-hmm. You'll say you want to go do things. I probably won't want to come and do them with you. Cause I'm yeah. not great in like going out of the house and doing things sometimes. Like yeah, I'm not right. going to want to do that. Yeah. So it's like sometimes people need a PSA first, like when they, right. you know, are you going to want to hang out just at home? Cause I'll probably want to do that. Right. Like that's cool. If we want to hang out and watch movies, sweet. Yeah. So this, like, th- yeah, this also applies yeah. like online. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Online I, friends are great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Make some online friends. <laughs> well, that's good as well. But I'm thinking specifically on, I'm on the discord for pod therapy and he scoops. I have never looked at it in my life because I can't deal. 
too many people oh. right. not looking unless yeah. you specifically tag me or come and find me. Even if you tag me, I'm probably not going to look at it. Yeah. I'm right. Be honest. Yeah. Jacob In, like, does that too. Yeah. Oh, but if, online friends with not reasons, too much though. expectation. Doesn't care. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, that's why, you know, I sometimes say it's as bad as it is that we're, we're way across the sea. Sometimes it's great because yeah. we're like, we're just going to be like, I'm tired now. Click. Yeah. 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 Goodbye. And it's great you know, because Brogan can't punch me when I say something annoying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Three three weeks a year he's within punching distance. Yeah. Uh, but it's the, it's the same with Chris as well. Chris right. Chris is probably... A microscope. To, yeah. Microscope is probably to me, or certainly was the scoop face to me, what Kez is Dwayne. Yeah. You know, uh, we were sharing a room and everything. He was like, you know, we, we need to go sometimes. Yeah. He was like, you're not okay. We need to go. Like, okay. Yeah, let's move around a little bit. Yeah. Jacob, is there a social context that you ever don't like? I mean, you seem <laughs> like you can just flow in and out. You can do small groups. You'll do medium size. You don't mind being up on the stage. At this point, you're so used to all of this and, and live entertainment. No, it's not the same thing, though. It, it's not the same thing. Being good at something and being able to do something isn't the same thing as liking to do something Fair. and yep. wanting to do so something. True. So Fair. true. Um, so I would say to the writer, uh, it is a thing that you can practice. It's a it, you know they're called social skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go out, you practice your social skills. Um, all you have to do, I would I would say, uh, take some of the pressure off yourself. You want to go hang out in a big group of people, or you think that might be interesting? Go hang out. Yeah, you don't have to say anything. Be you know, you can be polite to people when they speak to you. Whatever, you can just hang out. Mm-hmm. You nobody. You don't have to carry a conversation. You don't have to. Uh, you know, obviously, I don't mean to say. I keep. I'm going to keep on saying be polite and everything. Uh, that's a given. Yeah. You know, like if somebody speaks to you, hey, how you doing? Don't Give just stand back. there and, yeah. and and say nothing. Give them back some. Medicine. But I mean. You don't have to. You don't have to be the uh, the focal point of a conversation. You don't have to be the person who is is carrying the entire experience for everyone, just because you're there. Yeah, you can just go hang out and experience it, and that's what I would suggest doing. I would suggest going out and uh, and just starting off. You know, it's it's basically starting small. Yeah, you're going out. You're just being around. Like, oh, here's here's ten people that are you're gonna go uh, have dinner and go to a movie. Yep, I'm in. I'll be number eleven. Uh, you, you go, you sit in your spot at the table, you pay your check, you get your movie ticket, you get yourself to the movie theater, you watch the movie, everybody goes if home. If you're an AARP member, you get half <laughs> off you get a discount. before 4 p.m. There you go. Get that matinee in. Uh, I mean, so yeah, there, there is all of that. Uh, I'm right there with you. There's plenty of times over the week leading up to Scoop Fest, during Scoop Fest, after Scoop Fest, where... I am tired of like not not tired in a bad way, but just physically and mentally tired yeah. of being on spent. Uh, you know, it, it's like you're you're doing the thing, you're doing you're doing all the things, and you know, I'm I, I've got that added pressure of like I'm hosting this thing. Uh, I want everybody to have a good time, so like, you're you're doing all those things, and sometimes you know that's what it is. And you want to be able to have that skill. You want to be able to have that in your bag of tricks that you can that you can rely on. Uh, I would say, don't focus on someone else. Yeah. I I agree. I disagree with uh, with Kez and Brogan a hundred percent on that. Do not put yourself in a position where it's like I have to have this other person. I have oh, to yeah, have yeah, oh, this yeah. this mental crutch. The buddy. It's yeah. I just mean like if you want it's to, nice. you can have people. It's nice to have the yeah. buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, don't don't not have the buddy. Having yeah. the buddy is fine. But don't put yourself in a position where it's like, if I'm going to go out and do this thing, I got to have my buddy with me. Oh, yeah. of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't paint yeah. yourself into a Learn corner on that. Yeah. on your own, for yeah. sure. Wayne. Go <laughs> out there and it's, I'm going to say do the work, but it's not work. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. going out and just being around people. Yeah, and it is something that you become accustomed to, and it's fine. It's it's not a, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Those people, uh, frankly, don't care enough about you, and I mean that in uh, a good way. Yes, you don't owe anyone anything. They don't care enough about you to judge you. Yeah, so it's- they're not judging you, not because they're wonderful people or anything else. It's simply that's not part of their life. Mm-hmm. Why would they? Yeah. Right. What's it's like deep saying? embarrassment. Yo, if you show up with like red plaid pants and a striped shirt, they're going to judge you for that. For sure. But, you know, short of that, you're going to be fine. Yeah. 
No, I, don't I, mix patterns is I what like, I'm trying to say. I think that's where you're saying something about segregation. But I, I, <laughs> I, I appreciate your point because I agree with that, Jacob. That it's good writer to try to develop the skill a little. And I like you putting yourself in situations that don't immediately feel comfortable so mm-hmm. that you can kind of stretch a little bit. And at the same time, that doesn't mean you have to stay there, mm-hmm. right? And so, like, you still have your habitat. Yeah. You have your sized collectives. You do really well one-on-one. You do really well in small groups. And then you can tolerate for short durations of time larger gatherings. And you allow yourself to develop that skill. And then you retreat. Oh, and I'll tell you what. So yesterday, I was sitting around my house yesterday. And uh, my wife got back in town today. She's been out of town for almost a week. And uh, so I was sitting by myself at my house yesterday. Uh, I had been out uh, late the night before. uh, So it was just kind of a, a, a slow... Actually, I'd been up that morning, so it was it was a slow afternoon because I'd been I'd been away from the house all morning. Uh, just kind of had a slow afternoon. A couple of friends texted, said, "Hey, we're gonna go do this thing." It starts in like half an hour. I think it was about eight o'clock or maybe about ten till eight when they when they texted. The thing started at eight thirty. They said, "You want to come do this thing right now?" I said, "Yeah, sure. We'll do the thing." We went. We did the thing. Uh, there were four of us that that went and saw this thing. Uh, and then we went to a bar afterwards. Several people who had been in the thing, uh, they, they came to the bar. We're all hanging out. And at like 1 a.m. or so, I just looked around and thought, oh, I can be done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Throw your hands up. And done. I stood up. <laughs> I said my goodbyes. And I left. Yeah. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can just it's just out. I'm, I think I'm done with this for now. I hate I'll all see you guys later. Or I won't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you all. It's a classic Smith goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made the, the quick, Louisiana goodbye. Made the quick round, uh said bye to everybody. Uh you know, tongue kissed several people. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah. because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, and saw myself out. <laughs> Also, uh, that lady over there will be paying my bill. Thing, yes. <laughs> Whoever the, you see me tongue kissing, is paying they my split bill. the bill equally among all of them. Yeah, they've been uh, paid in full. So yeah, do the work. Uh, go out there. It's only going to help. I love it. It's just it's just going to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to clarify a slight point in the sense that when certainly when I was talking about it, but maybe when Case was as well, when I was talking about having you know Chris there, essentially, yeah, yeah. I I mean the more you go out and learn these skills and practice these skills, the more likely you are to find somebody who yeah. doesn't drain your social battery. There you yeah. Go. Okay. That's 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 more my my yeah, point. Yeah. Chris there doesn't drain my social battery. Wayne doesn't, you know. Kaz does. I think Wayne kinda does. <laughs> I reckon I could. <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like if, that's if, what we give learned. it time, give it time. <laughs> if, if they put their mind to it, they absolutely one hundred percent could. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The the power to do so, the will not to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well that could always change, Brogan. Don't trust yep. anybody. As we wrap up the show, I want to remind you, you can sign up at patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad-free a day earlier, as well as enjoy our live chat Discord community, which Brogan is a part of, but you'll never see Brogan there for <laughs> nope. whatever reason. And our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants. This week, we released the audio of our trivia battle against Morning Murders. Uh, though I believe it's still under review. I, I right, believe... so you're telling me I did this week's... Yeah, uh, this, you finally did one! I just did yeah. one? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Jacob has officially Look released at me go. A, uh, a Patreon Content Monday. Go check out Jacob's uh, battle yeah. between morning murders <laughs> and pot therapy. Jacob assumes all responsibility for all results and outcomes. <laughs> um, there's still time, by the way, to, uh, to join at the third act level or higher and get entered into our Funko Pop raffle. Everybody at that level or higher gets a ticket for every 10 on their pledge. Remember, we don't care if we actually get a billing cycle in. We're really not paying attention to that shit. We just want people to get tickets so we can give away this cool shit. In fact, go over there. Go over to the Patreon site. Ignore the lower levels. There is not a reason to even look at the lower Don't levels right now. <laughs> $10 and higher, and you want your you want your contributions to be in multiples of 10. There it is. You want to get raffle tickets for these Funko Pops. They're great. They're going to be signed. They look amazing. Uh, we might even... Flared base. We might, might, <laughs> might, might 
even get around to taking a picture with the four of us. Oh, they'll be crazy. And our Funko Pops with us dressed as oh, the Funko Pops. Man. Because I believe we oh all gosh. have the outfits we do that are have on the our Funko Pops. We do have the outfits. So I, I think that, uh, that that might that's something that, that just might happen. It's aspirational. We Maybe a Polaroid, then we just shove it in yeah. one of the Funkos. Patreon.com slash therapy, uh, $10 level or higher. Do it. Get in on that. And also, it's 10 bucks a month. Get over there. Put your 10 bucks a month in. Become a Theradactyl. Support the show. Support Keep us. it going. Love you guys for Woo. doing it. And if you're at the Therapod or Therapal level, upgrade that shit. You're already on the file. Just do get it. in there. Kick it up Do it now. Do it. I feel like you're do talking directly to me right now. Yeah. I, I'm talking directly shaming. to you and everyone else. And all I'm, the people. It's literally a microphone. All the peoples. <laughs> and remember, if you are short on cash, but you still want to support the show, steal the money. <laughs> steal the money <laughs> from your mother's purse. <laughs> <laughs> or you could go review us and rate us five stars on your podcast app. Uh, we do appreciate that. It does Do that anyway. Patreon.com <laughs> slash therapy. Jacob Sign with your the hard mother up sell. for Patreon. That's right. Yep. <laughs> That's right. That's the credit card fraud. Yeah. It's just signing people up yeah. to support podcasts. Fine. On their spirit credit card. <laughs> On their spirit card. Get those points. So it's also hurting them. Never let them go. We do want to thank our new patrons who have begun supporting the show at patreon.com slash therapy. We have new Theradactyl, Brogan. Who Good. the fuck is that? Who is Brogan? Who does, <laughs> does anyone anybody, know? Does anyone know? And also Scoopy Scoopy Jess Jess. Two nice. people that were in the studio last week <laughs> and were shamed directly by Jacob <laughs> with the hard sell. Yep. It works. I bet Wayne Giovinazzi is going to be on there next week. <laughs> <laughs> and notification. Bing. Also, a uh, Thera producer, Richard Macy, who has decided to upgrade that Thera producer membership and has transformed into... Richard fucking Macy. Wow. New name on the the profile. So Richard fucking Macy. Richard fucking Macy has upgraded to make sure that there are even more raffle tickets in his name. There you go. Smart. He wants them. Smart Honestly, move. it's a smart move. Power move. That's what we call that. Richard fucking Macy is playing chess while the rest of us are just <laughs> playing checkers. <laughs> and we want to thank the benevolent, revered, generous, and flagrantly pro-therapy diehards who love you all so much that they give till it hurts that they're partners. Thank you, Dirty B, Myra, and Pickett. And we want to especially thank our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club of their producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr., Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard fucking Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley slapping your face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Matt Lisa Tangerman, Heyo, Oscar Swan Rose, the Sunny Boy, Slurpy Kai, Motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, Hannah Marie, and Andrew Langmead. And especially we want to thank our friends from the Hey Buddy Nice Podcast show. You can check it out at, I think it's Nice Pod Bud. Yeah. Dot yeah, that's com. It. Yeah. Yes. I bet you can just search for Hey Buddy Nice Podcast. Yeah. And I don't think you want to put it in that order, though. I think yeah. you just want to put Podcast Nice Buddy. Podcast Buddy. Hey, nice. Hey, <laughs> nice podcast, buddy. So the thank Cowboy you all. Hat podcast. Yeah, yeah, do that too. I believe it's at OnlyFans.com. And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, and and why, why wouldn't, wouldn't you? you? Pew, pew. <laughs> and enjoy our Monday content. Go to Patreon.com slash therapy and thank you for supporting mental health. That's, That's all, all the time we have today. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. <laughs> we want to yeah. thank our landlords, the Ice Cream Social Podcast. And thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pot therapy is something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode with the world. Tag us on the socials when you do. It's at Pot Therapy Guys on Twitter, Instagram, and threads. Slash Pot Therapy on Facebook. And don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick. I'm Whitney. And I'm Jim. Pew, pew, Texas. Pew, pew. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you for your appointment next week. See, I don't need those fuckers. <laughs> nah, nah, you're, you're, you're nailing it. Just losers. Yeah. They're just dead weight. I feel yeah. better. I feel freer. Okay? <laughs> I feel like the show just upgraded. You and brought in some done. ringers for some of those questions, mm-hmm. though, today. Yeah. yeah. Easy peasies. Yeah. Last trivia question. I believe this one's worth 10,000 points. Uh, technically, there's four if you want to do them all.